Well, let's speak to the Czech journalist Jana Siglerova, who's been covering the election. She joins us from Miami. Thank you for, for talking to us. And I mean, I wonder if we can start on that note. How did an election for a largely ceremonial position get so heated? There was disinformation. There were even death threats. So it was an important, important election. And the Czechs felt that they could have a president that would... In, uh, uh, that would evoke similar emotions that as you know Václav Havel, the first Czech president, and so there was a lot at stake. And Andrei Babish was the the loser. Was the uh, he was a prominent Czech politician that uh, was no stranger to this sort of toxic, negative campaigns, disinformation. You know, these were his trademarks. Uh, this is how he operated in the previous year. So there was no wonder he uh, used these tactics again when so much was at stake. He could become a president of the country. Right. So what do you think were largely the reasons that Petro Pavel won this? Where did Andrei Babish go wrong? The, the negative campaign was actually one of the things that really contributed to putting people, it put people off, uh, especially his voters. And uh, and at the same time, it rallied, it enforced uh, the uh, Petr Pavel's voters to come even in bigger numbers. I've spoken to several voters who told me this is the first time they were voting in for presidential elections because they felt there was a decent person that they could have at, in, in the Prague Castle, where, which is the traditional place for the Czech president. So, um, I'm sorry. Oh, that's interesting that you're saying people turned out to vote potentially for the first time. They really felt that this counted this time. Yes, and the the vote attendance was enormous, was historic. It was over 70% of people came to vote, uh, of eligible voters, of course, and that has never happened in the Czech history before. So it only shows you the... Uh, not only that people knew how much was at stake and at the same time what kind of optimism and hope uh, General Pavel was able to create to, you know, uh, inspire people with his personality and his style of campaign, which was he insisted that it was going to be a decent campaign, that he was not going to go negative or toxic or, you know, backstabbing. So what can we expect from Petra Pavel and, and how much can he actually do in the role of president? What difference can he make? So the, the role of president of, of the Czech Republic is m largely symbolic. He does not really have a much influence on everyday people's lives. But at the same time, the Czechs have... You, you know, we like to have a president that is widely recognised in the Western countries in the civilized world and we didn't have that in the previous two presidents so this is like coming back to the tradition of you know the first ever Czechoslovak president Tomasz Garek Masaryk and first ever Czech president Václav Havel even the names rhyme Havel Pavel you know Czechs made a point of that <laughs> um, also it's a time of war uh, the Russian war on Ukraine is a big big topic in the Czech Republic it, it's affected many people on and the society on many levels and the fact that he's a former retired general a former soldier professional soldier played a huge role in why people chose him and you know many voters told me that that in the times of war they they consider it important to have a person to look up to that will lead them through it and will know what to do. Jana, briefly, we did see Andrei Babish congratulate his opponent and concede. Uh, so many countries are very divided at the moment. How polarised is the Czech Republic? It is polarised, but the majority of people voted for uh, General Pavel, so it's not as polarised as it is here in the United States where I'm based. But this will be a big task for General Pavel, and he addressed that already in his first sentence of the victory speech where he said that he wants to become the president of everybody. So he will have some bridges to mend, but he will be able to mend them. Jana Siglerova, a journalist there, staying up late to talk to us from Miami. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation.